There was so much hope, so much optimism after the march on Washington. We were able to bring more than 250,000 people. We must say that we cannot be patient. We do not want our freedom gradually, but we want to be free now. Some of the stuff that John Lewis was fighting for, we're still fighting for. Black people in the South couldn't register to vote simply because of the color of their skin. We've had voter suppression for so, for so long. My friends, let us not forget that we are involved in a serious social revolution. Voter suppression right now is at an all-time high. Latinos, blacks, and young people are the targets. By and large, American politics is dominated by politicians who build their career on immoral compromising and align themselves with open form of political, economic, and social exploitation. It's amazing when you think about how long ago that was, and yet we're still, we're still fighting that fight. We must say, wake up, America, wake up, for we cannot stop, and we will not and cannot be patient. Hero is a word we should use sparingly as our dialect has transcended to inflate and dramatize mundane scenarios. However, this word should be preserved for the iconic and revolutionary John Lewis. Today is a sad day in that we lost two of the uh, most powerful activists that we've ever had. You know, C.T. Vivian and, and John Lewis. It's why the King, LeBron James, paid homage to him. It's why Skinny Mello did the same on Instagram, quoting Lewis in a post with a seminal visual. Notwithstanding, a large portion of America despised Lewis and his conquest for equality. Some, like the 45th president of the United States, a proud enabler of white supremacy, still do to this very day. When Lewis passed, Trump did not hold a news conference or offer his condolences. Instead, he golfed his 278th time playing via golfnewsnet.com. In 1961, Lewis was one of 13 original Freedom Riders who rode buses across the South in 1961 to challenge segregation in public transportation. They were attacked and beaten. One of their buses was firebombed. A great man that fought for a lot of things that, uh, that we're experiencing right now. I mean, obviously we got a long way to go, but uh, you know, he was a pioneer and and getting us to where we are right now because he was relentless in what he did. Lewis and Co.'s mission? To test compliance with two Supreme Court rulings, Boynton versus Virginia, which declared that segregated bathrooms, waiting rooms, and lunch counters were unconstitutional, and Morgan versus Virginia, in which the court ruled that it was unconstitutional to implement and enforce segregation on interstate buses and trains. Lewis, the son of Alabama sharecroppers, attended segregated schools and was inspired by Rosa Parks and Dr. Martin Luther King. John Lewis joins with a small group of young people dedicated to nonviolent protest. They become known as the sit-in kids, their mission to desegregate lunch counters and movie theaters in Nashville. Mr. Lewis led demonstrations against racially segregated bathrooms, hotels, restaurants, public parks, and swimming pools, and he rose up against other indignities of second-class citizenship. At those sit-ins in Nashville, Lewis does endure violence and abuse. People would come up, they would pull us off the lunch counter stool, pour hot chocolate or coffee, in our hair, down our back, put lighted cigarettes out in our hair. At nearly every turn, he was beaten. He was tormented by white mobs and absorbed body blows from law enforcement. He is also beaten, the first of many beatings and more than 40 arrests in his years in the civil rights movement. As chairman of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee in the 1960s, Lewis was just 23 when he spoke at the March on Washington. The Civil Rights Act of 1964 was signed into law by President Lyndon B. Johnson. However, many states, particularly in the South, used poll taxes, literacy tests, and other measures to keep their African-American citizens essentially disenfranchised. On March 7, 1965, John Lewis led marchers across the Edmund Pettus Bridge. We are marching today to dramatize to the nation, dramatize to the world, that hundreds and thousands of Negro citizens of Alabama, but particularly here in the Blackfield area, denied the right to vote. Marching across the Edmund Pettus Bridge, named after a grand dragon of the Alabama Ku Klux Klan and the last Confederate general, to serve in the United States Senate where he was in office for 10 years, Lewis and 600 others demanded the voting rights they had been denied. It was peaceful until... It be detrimental to your safety to continue this march, and I'm saying that this is an unlawful assembly. There's John Lewis front and center.
The troopers responded with tear gas and bull whips and rubber tubing wrapped in barbed wire. In the melee, which came to be known as Bloody Sunday, a trooper cracked Mr. Lewis's skull with a billy club, knocking him to the ground, then hit him again when he tried to get up. The violence was broadcasted to the masses. The nation watched in shock and horror. The raw footage galvanized support for the Voting Rights Act, which President Lyndon B. Johnson presented to a joint session of Congress eight days later and signed into law on August 6, a milestone in the struggle for civil rights. The law struck down the literacy test that black people had been compelled to take before they could register to vote and replace segregationist voting registrars with federal registrars to ensure that black people were no longer denied the ballot. He was elected to Congress 17 times. He was 80 years old, gone too soon. We must honor his legacy now more than ever. If you'd like to hear more thought-provoking content like TYT Sports on Facebook and to help in my journey to keep media independent, go to tyt.com Rick.